Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Harika. So in today's video, I am going to show you the most awaited feature, uh, which is Action Center for UiPath Apps. So I hope you are all excited because I see this coming up in a lot of situations, especially in forum, and I see people really looking forward for this particular feature. If you haven't tried it out yet, then definitely this video will help you. And I have, uh, you know, divided this video into three different portions or different, you know, uh, places where I talk about and it will be very much interesting and useful for you because I have driven it through a use case so you can easily understand. And I try to keep this use case very small and simple so that you can also try it parallelly. And by end of this video, you can understand completely how you can do this from end to end. So that's being the agenda. I'm going to start this video. So first of all, um, if you wanted to have your app that uh, creates a task on the action center and someone has to come in there and take some action over there. So we need to concentrate on three different areas here. It's till now, whatever we are doing it, whatever the app development that we are doing, it's only on the app studio. But now this needs a lot of other areas that we need to connect the gaps with or connect the dots with, right? So what are those three areas that I'm going to talk here? Or one is action center where we have to define our action definition. And the second one is App Studio, where we create our app. And the third one is Studio Web, where we run our process and create the task, right? So these are the three areas that you should be, uh, you know, concentrating on. So if you're not so flexible with Studio Web, you can also do it via Studio Desktop. So that will also, I'll show you uh, how you can do that by end of the video. So first of all, I will show you what is action definition and why we need it and how to build it or, you know, how to uh, upload or import it into our action center. So this is the first thing that I'm going to concentrate on. So first of all, if you understand uh, our app like you know in my app i'm gonna have certain fields and user gonna look at all the fields and he'll take some action right whether it's an approve or deny or whether it's a onboard or need more details right all of these things that usually happen in an action center so first thing the user gonna view all the details right so the action definition contains this let me put it over here so the action definition contains what are all the fields that you're passing into your app, right? So all the details and along with the outcomes and along with the outcomes. So this is basically a schema, right? We, we have to upload a schema of how, what are the things that the data should be passing in and out into our app. That's the whole idea of the action definition. Let me show you one example of how this looks like and how we actually import this into our action center. Right. So if you see here, I have just taken a very small basic example, which every one of us know or aware or relate to. And uh, I have just created a small app with just two, three fields, not more than that. So there won't be much confusion. OK, so this is just a hike approval app. So let's consider in an organization, everyone applied for the hike. And then, you know, from the first line manager, they got a percentage of the hike. But yeah, if, if it's going beyond a certain threshold, it needs to get approval from the second level of manager. So now I'm going to create a task for that thing. OK, so if at all the, the, the particular hike is going beyond maybe a 10% or 20%, then I want this to be approved from the next level of the management, right? So for that, what I've done, I just created only two fields, which are really needed for me, employee ID and the hike percentage, right? So I need to have these two fields in my schema, first thing. And also what is the outcome that will be coming after the task uh, action center is either he approves it or he takes it for a review right either it goes for a review so i will have only two buttons either approve or more details like review right so only four things needs to be there on my schema that's enough right so let's go to the schema so this is my schema that i have so if you see here my schema contains employee id and the salary just assume the salary as a hike because i just you know tweaked a little bit which was already there right this is a hike and the outcomes, what are the outcomes? 
either you approve it or deny it. So it can be whatever the possible outcomes that are there. You just keep it over the allowed outcomes. So this is my schema. And what I have done in my schema, everything that I've built it, I have uploaded it into Action Center. So how can you upload that? You have to build a schema there. So go to your Action Center in the same tenant and in the admin settings, click on the tenant. Here you can see there is add action definition, right? Just click on this and whatever the schema that we have developed already, which is a JSON file, you can import from file. Okay. So if you want to read more about what is this action definition and I want to more, I want to know more in details about action definition, clearly you have more documentation over here. Okay. You can just click it and you can learn more details about it so that it will give you full understanding so that, you know, you can define any kind of schema. And then if you want to get a sample, right, just like how I have done, I just took a sample of it. I just downloaded it and then tweaked it based on my use case. And after I edit it, I'm going to import the file. What is my file that I've tweaked this one? Action definition demo. And then it has picked my name and the description automatically from the schema. And then click on the create. So once after you do that, you can see the action definition over here. Right. So first thing we have created the action definition. So first thing we have created the action definition. So basically this action definition should align with your app. It should contain the details that you want to display over there. And what are the outcomes that it, uh, you know, will possible outcomes from the task that comes in the action center. So these two are the must and should. And that's how you develop your schema. If you have any questions, you can check the documentation as I shown over here, or you can just download the sample and tweak as per your use case. So that's about action definition, right? So we have what we have done. We have uploaded the action definition into our tenant, correct? So now what we have to do, go to your app. Okay, you already know how to build a small app. So I haven't done anything over here. I just kept a very simple one just to show this use case because I want to deliver the uh, content over here, which will be, you know, adaptable accordingly if you know the concept, right? So I just wanted, don't want to keep it so big and confuse you, but I just wanted to keep it simple and deliver the concept so you can adapt accordingly to your use case. So here, what I'm doing, I'm just taking the employee ID and the hike, right? So what are the uh, things that I will be passing over here is the main thing, correct? And before to that, the action definition, which I have uploaded to the action center. Here, if you see, we have a new control, which is action. Till now, we were not having this one, right? So this is, this is the new one. So as I've already added, this is not letting me to add a new action because one app will have only one action definition. So if you want at any point of time, you can just click on replace or delete and add new ones. So I'm going over here and then I can see this is my action definition and then I can click on replace if I want to add a new action definition. If at all it's in a different tenant, click on different tenant and select the tenant that you wanted to pick it from and do it accordingly, right? I think I am clear till this part. So we have seen what is action definition and we have seen how we can link that action definition to our app. So this part I'm not explaining much because this is very basic and you all know already, right? So now what I'm doing, I have to pass some value into this expression, right? So what is the value that I'm picking it from here is this one. From the action definition, actions, how you can actually use the syntax actions dot. This is my action definition employee ID. Similar way from here. What is the value that's there? Here salary I'm using because my actual definition contains salary, but this is hike actually. Okay. Just uh, don't worry about the name. And here the next major new activity that it is a uh, new control. I can say new control that we have is. So as I told you, we have approve and the more detail. So what happens if you click on approve, right? The, the action has to be submitted. Right. If you remember or if you know about the UiPath the forms, so there will be something on submit. You have to close the form. Right. So similar way, just I'm just giving you an idea so that you can relate if you already have knowledge on forms. So on approve, if you click on events, so submit action, that means whatever the task that's there in the action center, you have to submit it. Correct. So before you submit, what you have to do, the value that's there, 
on the form should be coming into your sorry this will be override this fields will be overrided right so you we all know how these fields will be functioning and the overriding and what is the action that you are taking here start onboarding that means whatever the, like you know go to the next step right so this will come in the events page so this action submission has to be done over here at the first click and the same thing should happen. The form uh, action should also be submitted on clicking on more details, this button also. So, so you should implement the same thing, but what is the action outcome? It is a request more details. So what happens uh, with this outcome is, it will be used in the further steps based on the outcome that we get. We can either, you know, move it into different buckets. That, that is the outcome that we can observe. So I hope this part is clear. So once after you do this, here I'm going to tell you one different thing, right? So here if you see, so you have action definition. I've explained about action definition and what you have to do in App Studio. In App Studio, we will be first creating an app. Create app according to use case. And later what we have to do, we have to uh, bind. We have to bind the actions definition, right? And then we have to bind the data accordingly. And we also have to submit action wherever it's needed. Submit action, like on clicking on a certain button or doing certain action, but wherever it's needed, we have to do that, right? So this part is clear. And after this comes the major thing. So usually what we used to do earlier, whenever we click on publish, right? Whenever we click on publish, we used to have this app deployed into our orchestrator right but now here what happens is once after i click on publish so this app is only accessible through action center as a part of long running workflow that means you cannot see this app into your orchestrator just like how you used to see the other apps that we you know used to work earlier so now if you see this app that i am having with me right apps demo ac i have created so let's say if i go to my orchestrator I would not be able to see this app there because this will be available only for long running processes. Okay. So let me go to apps. So if you see here, there are no apps present, but earlier there used to be apps present, right? Because I mean like, sorry, I need to deploy it first. So we can see there are no reasons. That means there are no apps to deploy, correct? So that's why it, this is only present for the long running processes. That means you can present this, uh, you can have this only in the action center as a task, right? So now let's go. So till this part, it's clear, I believe. It's quite simple. First, we have created the action definition and then we have uh, created the app in the studio. We've linked both of them and we've binded the data and then we have uh, added the necessary events, right? Which is submit action, right? Wherever it's needed. So now the major task is, we, are, we should go to our studio, right? Where we will be utilizing this published app, okay? So let me go to the studio. So first I'll show you how you can use it on the studio web directly. And then you can also open that in the studio desktop, which is quite similar. I'll also show that part, okay? So now if you see here, uh, this he, here we should have this particular uh, activity, which is create app task. Okay, so in the create app task, what I have done is I have used apps demo account. So once after you just click on this, you can see all the apps that you have published, right? So here I have published multiple apps. One such app is apps demo AC, right? So I'm using that particular app. And then what are the uh, schema? values that I have is employee ID and the salary, right? So that means hike. Let's consider it as hike. And then that's it. Let's execute this. So just quite simple. What you're doing by using this particular activity is you're creating a task. You're creating a task for the next steps, either approval or denial, right? So just click on test. And then this should create one task in the action center. So let's check it. So it has ran successfully. So now let's go to action center. In the inbox, we can see 
a few seconds ago, a task got created, which is sample definition. So we can see here the task title is sample definition. You can change it as per your need, right? So we have created the task and I have passed the employee ID and the salary. So we can just see the details. Right. So I haven't created anything. This is not this is a bold one. OK, so uh, this just quite simple one because I just want to test it. So just click on uh, before you actually perform some action, you should assign it to yourself. You should uh, just assign it to yourself and then click on onboard and then it will be going to the completed status. Right. So now what I'll do is I'll just publish this app because I just made some changes. I published the app, right? So this got published and it will be available in the automation. And now what I'll do, I have to take this latest version of the app. So for that, I have to first refresh this. So right now there's uh, no com no possibility that we are seeing the version, but yeah, we can see that in future because it is in, uh, you know, like we there, we can just click on the refresh. So it will just refreshes and we can see the latest version coming up. And let's try. Now we will see if this is showing us the latest one. Let's test this. So it's quite simple, right? So we are just creating a uh, app task by using create app task activity. And we can see the task getting created in the action center. So let's see now in the unassigned. Okay. Right, perfect. So we can see that the new version got appended, right? So how I have, you might have got a question, like how the data is coming up, right? So the data that is coming up over here is a static one. Like I have, uh, <clears throat> I have passed some static data. Okay, so this is a static data, but let's say, as I promised you that I'll show in the studio as well in this desktop. So let me go to this. So this is the same app that I'm utilizing over here. Okay, so what I'll do here, I'll just uh, show you one small thing. <clears throat> so let me show you the, yeah, I'm utilizing this particular file, this particular Excel. So in this Excel, I have my first name, last name, and uh, all this information and the height percentage, okay? So as of now in the form, I'm utilizing only employee ID and the height percentage. So what I will do is I'll just keep a threshold of 10%, okay? So if the percentage is more than 10, height percentage is more than 10, then I will send my task for the approval, okay? So for that, what I'll do, I will create an employee ID with, uh, Ideally, the employee ID should be here, but just for utilizing purpose, I'm just creating an employee ID with first name, last name, and some numbering. So I'll just show you that how I'm doing it. So I just imported this workflow into local. So if at all you want to try it out on, you know, from your uh, desktop, what you just have to install persistence.activities, uipath.persistence.activities, and then you can able to find this uh, create app task, okay? under that and then just take uh, this read range. I'm just taking it and then for each. And if if you see here, if the percentage is greater than, if the height percentage is greater than 10, okay, if the percentage is greater than 10, then what I'm doing, then I'm just adding the current name, uh, current row, first name, last name, and the index uh, for creating the employee ID. And then I'm taking the hike percentage. Okay. And then I'm creating the task, right? Later, which uh, otherwise I'm just directly approving it. So for this, uh, what I'll do, I'll just uh, quickly show you how I have done this. Create app task. Okay. I'm taking create app task. Okay. And then I'll give some title, hike approval, okay. And then I'm selecting the task here, apps demo AC. And later I will be taking the employee ID, which I've already assigned and then the hike, right? So I'm just 
let's see how we are able to create the task. So for ideally for first few, it will be directly approving because the percentage is not greater than 10%. But for the rest of them where the percentage is more, so, so you see here approved directly as high percentage is five, six, right? So now let's go to the next step. So here we can see the task got created. So let's go to actions, enter and see the task. So here hike approval is the task that got created. So let's see here. What has come, right? Hike approval, employee ID, first name, last name, and the uh, index, and the hike is 14%. So now I can take a step on it, like why 14%, right? So what is the employee ID, what the person has done, like all the details, whatever the details that you want to put over here, you can just do it, right? So now I can assign to myself, if I know about the person or if I know about the, uh, you know, the task that the person has done or whether the person is eligible or not, then if I think the person is eligible, I'll click on approve and then complete. So based on that, it will go into the certain bucket. Otherwise, I'll take it for the next review or something like that okay so like that you can actually streamline your processes and use the action center accordingly for the apps so it's quite simple we just need to concentrate on certain things and how you do that end to end i have clearly explained you with a demo so now let's see here we have got few more unassigned tasks so we can say one, two, three, four, five, right? So these are all the ones that have come into our bucket. So yeah, this is how you can do it. Uh, I hope I've clearly touched each and every part which is needed uh, for you to create something from the scratch and show up the task in the action center. If you have some questions or if you have tried it already or if you see anything is not working as expected for you or if you're facing some glitches, please feel free to DM me on my LinkedIn or put it down on the comments uh, under this particular video. I'm happy to help you and would love to see more uh, people trying it out and working on this particular enhancement. Thank you so much for all of you. I hope I have helped you with this concept. I'll see you with the next concept next time. Till then, stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel. Bye.